So when I grow up, coach, what are you gonna be when you grow up? The very first step, and honestly, I was tempted to just make this how to have a creative career in one easy step because I feel like this is the key. Believe that you could do it. <laughs> um, as I said, easier said than done. But but that's it. If, if there's not a real underlying trust there and belief there that it's possible, I know it's really hard to bridge that gap from whatever job you're in now that you're not happy with or whatever career you're doing that just isn't working the way you want it to be working to actually believing that this could be your full-time, lucrative, heart-aligned business. The majority of you doesn't believe that and really believe that it's possible. Um, this isn't like a law of attraction sort of thing. This isn't, oh, just envision it and it'll happen. This is just that sense of, oh, I'm, I'm going to be able to do this. If I show up, if I do my work, if I figure this out in a way that it works for me, I'm going to be able to do this. So believing that it's possible is, is the key. Step two of how to have a creative career is to start thinking and instead of or. So we really have been conditioned, depending on what kind of household you grew up in and the people that you are around, uh, you know, kind of with the belief, and it's not the wrong belief, it might have been right at the time, but it's certainly shifted now in the age of the internet, that, you know, you are born, you go to school, and then you pick a major and graduate with a degree in that major, and you try to find a job that matches to that. And if you don't stay with the same company forever, which people don't really do so much anymore like they did way back when, then at least you're in the same job positioning um, in different careers and you climb that ladder. And then if you're a Jew from Long Island like me, you retire to Florida and then you stay there and retire and play tennis until you die. And that's your life. So the thought of there being an and to your career, the thought of there being not one thing or the other thing. And Margaret Lobenstein talks about this really well in the book, The Renaissance Soul, which I talk about wherever I go, that when you're someone that has a lot of different passions, and that is 99% of the creative people that I speak to, you have to have a career that speaks to that. Um, sometimes that gets translated to us as being flaky or that we have ADD or we don't finish what we start and it is not true. Let's start looking at our renaissance wholeness as a blessing instead of a curse and honor that. So I could use myself as an example because even though I'm the one I grow up coach and I'm a creative career coach and if people look at what I do, they go, oh, she, she coaches people. My career is so much bigger than that because I have the space to write books and speak and make these videos and do things that, uh, be an accountant, be my marketer, be my copywriter, do these different things that appeared in my Renaissance soul and my, and my creativity. And then, you know, the things that I don't want to do and I'm not interested in learning, I pass off to someone else, like my web design. When you start thinking an and, you could you could see how everything could come together and you could start thinking of that umbrella career that Margaret Lopenstein calls it, what encompasses everything. Or even you could start thinking in seasons. Maybe you know if you wanna sell knitwear, that's not gonna be something that's gonna sell so well in the summer. So maybe you're bringing in your love and talent of cooking and catering in the summer and selling your knitwear in the winter. The third easy step to having a creative career is to, to surround yourself as best you can with people that get it. So even though we could have the most wonderful, supportive families like I do, um, sometimes when I first started coaching, the vast majority of the people that I knew like were very supportive and lovely and wonderful towards towards my goals and, and me getting my certification, but I had no idea what it was. So it was hard to kind of talk to them about it. And they still felt very iffy that um, I was getting my certification and embarking on this business during a recession and like, how was I gonna make any money? Um, so finding a group, starting to blog or following other blogs or joining something like my clubhouse, yay, plug for my clubhouse, or taking a class that you know there's gonna be these other like-minded people, or going on meetup.com and seeing are there entrepreneurs in my area, are there creative people in my area? 
anything you could do to kind of widen your circle. I know it's really scary at first, but I hope you can take some comfort in the fact that not only have I built my business by finding these like-minded people because they've become my clients and my biggest referrers, but I've had just some of the best relationships and friendships that I've ever had by finding these people online in the world, my internet friends that just get it and they're with me. It's not impossible to have a creative career without it, but it's really important to have that team. So there are your three steps. I hope they're not too difficult. And the easy part wasn't too misleading. So use it, have fun, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for being here. Bye. That was amazeballs.